welcome to this exciting video let's just get right into it starting off with pressure plates pressure plates activate redstone once something is on the pressure plate you can also throw an item on the pressure plate and it will activate the redstone but as you can see the redstone is dimmer on the weighted pressure plates compared to the wooden pressure plate. Tripwire hooks activate when you cross it. To use a tripwire hook, you just get some string and place it in between the two hooks. Buttons activate redstone directly and they turn off after a little bit of time. Wooden buttons stay on for longer than stone buttons. Levers stay on until you flick them off. Redstone torches and redstone blocks offer power at all times. Just like that. But with redstone torches you can turn off. But you cannot turn off redstone blocks. They are always powered. Redstone dust has a limit for how long it can power stuff. A redstone repeater resets that length so therefore it can it helps you power things further away just like that redstone lamp right there. Red Repeaters also have a delay once you power them, unlike dust, which is instant. Just like that. Repeaters have four different modes. One tick delay, two tick delay, three tick delay, and four tick delay. Each tick is 0.1 of a second. Just like that. Redstone comparators take an output of something in a chest. Or just anything that's in something. Like if there was a furnace here, it will take an output if there was something in the furnace. As you can see, it's off. Once I put something in the chest, it is powered. But the, um, if you only have one item, it will only power one redstone dust. If I take this further away, it will not be powered. So to counter that, just put a repeater and it will extend the length of the redstone. Using comparators, you can also make a redstone clock. If you flick it into negative mode, it will make a redstone clock just like that. Another way you can make a redstone clock is if you have redstone and repeaters in a sort of square pattern and briefly place a redstone torch just like that. To stop this one you just break one of the redstone dust. The third way to make a redstone clock is to get two hoppers facing each other a redstone comparator out of that with another redstone repeater when there is no redstone it just keeps going but once you get a lever you can also toggle this clock just like that hoppers like seen here take items and transfer them into whatever they're facing if you place an item in the top hopper when there's a pattern like this it will first go down before it goes to the side as you can see there are no items here but there are items here you can also collect items with hoppers when, by just throwing them in not placing them in but it works either way as you can see right here observers detect when the block they're facing has an update 
So if something changes on this block, it will fire redstone pulse out the back. So if I place a block here, it will detect it. If I break it, it will detect it. If I toggle some redstone, it will detect it. Just like that. It's very useful if you want to have something activated down here but go up somewhere else because you can just build a tower of observers just like that as you can see here another way to use comparators is to make pulse extenders what that means is when you press the button the thing that is activated will stay activated for longer just like that and you can extend these pulse extenders as much as you want to have a very long activation time just like so okay moving on droppers will just drop items out once they are in the dropper like so dispensers will do the same with normal items they will both drop it out but with something like fireworks that can be activated droppers will just uh, drop them out <laughs> this is a dropper sorry it will just drop the item out but dispensers will actually activate the item like so pistons are one of the one of the most used uh, blocks because they're just very useful a normal piston will just push a block push up yeah just push a block and it will not retract it it will retract the piston but not the block sticky pistons will push a block and also retract it so sticky pistons can also be used for doors just like that also it, that includes hidden doors just like that using two sets of sticky pistons to attract the block and the sticky pistons target blocks send a red zone pulse when you shoot an arrow at it you can also use a dispenser to shoot an arrow into the target block. Daylight sensors will detect when it is daytime or when it is nighttime. You can switch back and forth between these at any time, just like so. There are four different types of rails. The normal rail just lets you ride along by pressing the forward and back button. Just there, no, just the forward button. Like so. What a detector rail does is it detects when a minecart is on that rail and it will activate redstone. Just like so. You can use a detector rail for the powered rail. What powered rail does is when it is activated with redstone, it will speed up the minecart without you even pressing the forward button. And we can use a detector rail to power the powered rail, just like so. My hand is off the keyboard. But if a powered rail is not powered, it will just slow down the minecart, as you can see here. An activated rail will activate what's in a minecart. But the activated rail, like the powered rail, it has to be powered to do so. If you are sitting in a minecart and you go over a powered activated rail, it'll just exit you out of the minecart. The other way to use an activated rail, as said before, is to activate something in a minecart, like this minecart with TNT. Once it goes over the activator rail, the TNT is activated. 
slime blocks and honey blocks stick together and if you push them with a piston they will stay together just like so as we know piston have pistons or sticky pistons have a limit of how many blocks they can push but slime blocks and honey blocks don't stick to each other so you can have pistons push them side by side another way to use slime blocks and honey blocks is to build a flying machine just like that using a piston to push this half and a sticky piston to pull it up and another way to use flying machines in an interesting way and also an interesting way to end off the video is to do something like this Thanks for watching. Let me just turn that off. That's so loud. Okay. Thanks for watching this awesome redstone video. I hope you enjoyed and maybe you learned something. I don't know. <laughs> and hope you have a great day. Bye.